David's going to talk about uh, Squid and uh, Dan's family. Is, it, is, is Dan a real person? I think so. We haven't really spent a lot of time worrying about who he is. Mm. It's more worried about what my son was getting into. Ah, well, that would make <laughs> sense. I, I, would, I would agree with you if I had children. But I've had other types of children, like Please, employees have and co-workers, mm. who <laughs> tended to do some of the similar things. Yeah. Act um, like versus art. I don't really have any news. Other than that, um, so, can you all see Adam here? Or should we turn the light on? Light. Turn the light off to get that reflection. Oh, I, I forgot that when you sit down. Oh, yeah. There's a little reflection. No, I can't put much about that. Yeah, Dave is gone. First of all, just a real quick overview of what uh, Dan's Guardian and, and Squid Proxy do, how they work together. Uh, in the inside of your network, you'll have just some client machine that you want to filter. 
Uh, that's connected uh, via the network to Dance Guardian. In your uh, uh, settings for the uh, browsers on those client machines, uh, you configure the Dance Guardian address as the uh, proxy server. The uh, Dance Guardian and Squid Proxy could be on different machines. I haven't ever had a reason why, but they could be. Uh, in our today, we're just installing them on the same machine. So TCP connection from Dance Guardian to Squid. Then uh, the Squid Proxy then just connects out to the internet. It's just uh, that's just basic overview. Now I stole a lot of this from, uh, I found a site on the internet. When I was trying to do my research, I found somebody else had done most of the research for me. Oh, okay, let's do it that way. So you just acquired the work. Yes. So if anyone thinks it's all original, I'm sorry to disappoint you. Uh, first step is just to install Squid. Uh, if you have a CentOS box like I do, just, you know, install Squid. I won't make you watch the whole installation because I already did it. <laughs> you don't really have to uh, configure Squid. Um, if you have the default CentOS uh, firewall rules, it doesn't allow incoming connections by default. So you have to open that port in order to get connections to it. So by default, Squid is going to listen on the internet or on the on the network on port 3128. If you don't have a firewall rule blocking that, or if you just want to be a little more secure, uh, get into the Squid configuration and change it to listen on the loopback adapter instead of uh, just on the generally port, one, uh, port 3128. Uh, next, next step is to uh, download Dan's Guardian. That we have uh, You just go to dansguardian.org. There isn't any prepackages for sent. There, there is if you use uh, it's RPM Forge. Oh, okay. Uh, I hadn't used that before, so when I found it today, I didn't want to uh, spend the time to figure out how to configure uh, Yum to use their uh, RPMs. So for the purposes of today, I downloaded uh, Dan's Guardian. 2.10.0.3 See, I downloaded it to the user source directory. This uh, configure command tells it to run with uh, a user named Dan's Guardian. Group name or Dan's Guardian. Do you have to pre install a user in the group or does that get taken care of by the install script? You have to do it. Okay. I'm a little bit out of order on my list here. I have that. Oh, sorry. But uh, I do have that in here. User add Dan's Guardian. Free. 
Cut. Um, I recommend that you change the uh, default shell from uh, bin bash to SBIN no login. So you uh, minimize abuse of that account. I also uh, ask that you install uh, Zlib. Uh, Devel. Devel. How would most people pronounce that? Mm -hmm. I swear this worked before. Could it be maybe the virtual environment? This is the virtual environment it worked in before. Unless you want to watch lots of interesting, uh, exciting stuff, just trust me that did work before. Machine and not recognized. Then, uh, it did work, which it, it worked the first time for me. So, I, then I just did uh, make and make and make and and make install. I'll do the first command and see if that's successful or on the second. Next step is to uh, copy the uh, init script over to the init directory. All, all of these uh, instructions will be on the web page. So yeah. Be able to, to view them. But the init script in this directory. Of course, it doesn't set your permissions or anything by default. So make the init script uh, executable. Change the logging directory so it's owned by the uh, Dance Guardian user. Then we configure Squid and Dance Guardian to start automatically. This is the line to allow network access to the um, the default uh, file has every line in it except this one I added allowing access to port 8080. So is that the default that Dan listens on his AV? Yeah, I don't think it's a particularly good default, but it doesn't happen to interfere with anything I'm doing right well, now. I've seen a lot of proxies always use 8080, so... Well, if, if that's something that you're already configured for, proxy-wise it's pretty handy. Mm -hmm. If you have a if you have a squid configured to listen there, then you're going to have to move it to a different port. Well, if it's, listed, if it's already on 3128, then you can... Then you don't have to do anything. Yeah, you're changing it over. And if Dan's Guardian expects Squid to be on 3128, so if, if you don't change the defaults, it, it just works out of the box.
I always use the restart command uh, because sometimes I'll have started the uh, process before when I was troubleshooting and I just make sure everything is up to date. It's rid of the PID and stuff like that. Yeah, now if, if you haven't started Squid or Dance Guardian before, it'll show you an error when it tried to shut it down, and then it'll start it up just fine. So it doesn't hurt anything. Now the uh, fun part is the uh, access control list. And in our uh, default location there, in user local, etc., dance guardian list. And if you have the RPM, I'm guessing it's going to be in etc., dance guardian list. Mm -hmm. Instead of being user local. Right. Uh, these are the uh, lists that you have available. Uh, the biggest one that I use that I find that Dance Guardian helps with is the, uh, I believe it's the band phrase list. Hmm. So it's not based upon like a site URL in, in this respect. It's looking for actual words as part of the, the yes. URL. Mm -hmm. uh, in, actually, that, in the page. Does it's, that include text oh. and tags? I, not, text. I think it's just text. I think it filters out the tags. The, uh, oh, it, it filters those particular words out or it just doesn't display well, the page? Well, it doesn't display the page at all. Okay. But I think that the HTML is not looked at when it's... Uh, trying to determine what it's. Oh, so it's gonna it's, it's gonna at, discard the tags and look at the contents of yeah, between the tags. Yeah. But it's supposed it's to analyze content. the content. This uh, this gambling list is not included by default, but I thought that maybe we would use that instead of going to something more embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this. Uh, <coughs> Uh, the lists are uh, included or commented out, you know, if you happen to like lots of pornography but are against illegal <laughs> drugs and gambling, you can comment this one out and uh, uncomment this one. For troubleshooting, I like uh, Foxy Proxy. Uh, since we're on the same machine, we can view the uh, what we would see if we went straight to the internet, what we can see if we go through Squid, and what we can see if we go through Dan's Guardian. That's pretty nice. So, just using Squid. Oh, are you cooked up to the bar? Hmm. Yeah, so apparently they're ahead of us here uh, as far as filtering this out. Yeah, I forgot to mention that. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, <laughs> you can't right. play poker next door? That's not nice. Try a different what access point you <laughs> have. Yeah. Try training. It's not broadcasting. And you think I know how to do this? Um, in KDE. Never mind, I'll configure to work at home and on open one. It's interesting, I found the bar like that. And you can't define your own DNS because I have a firewall rule in the wireless access point preventing you from using outside DNS. How <laughs> Do you have, you obviously have Squid running at home, right? Yes. 
You could do a squid tunnel to your house. Sounds like fun. I don't know how that would affect your. Uh, mm. Can you just throw windows in the um, gambling list and just try to mark those up? Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Well, that is gambling. You can risk every time you fire it up. That'd take less time than to try to block something like that. Well, it's a the game I sound like all the time. Cyber Nations. The games are banned too. I got a lot of stuff on my game. What sort of Nazi service are you guys running? <laughs> <laughs> you supposed to learn when you come here or what? Uh, you know what I, I mean, spent cool. yesterday morning doing? I don't want to know what you did yesterday. Finding who was sucking Facebook. the bandwidth. Updating your Facebook. Not me this time. I don't have Facebook. Block YouTube. Is that, is that why we want to live with the YouTube's bandwidth points? <laughs> what, what do you use for that? I don't need OpenVS. Oh, well, I suppose. There's this really great thing that works with um, squid and it's called Sarge, which will break it out by IP. And oh, yeah. Uh huh. I've, I've used that for reports. But. There's only, structurally, it's only an access point thing that just goes straight out to the internet. And without having to build a machine with a hard drive, it's just a DDWIRT router with OpenDNS hardwired into it with a couple uh, IP tables. So it makes it easier to manage. Plus I can put my logo on there. They had a phrase list for that. Let me give it a shot. Music you can't live without. Well, it doesn't suck. There's just not enough going on on that page. <laughs> Flash Star Wars with a Z. There we go. That's access tonight. Access tonight. Oh, two categories. Hey, Wolf, you don't need to put that on for all your little kids in school so they can't get source of the games. Wait, what is that? <laughs> if you have any queries, contact your network manager, and it never happens. <laughs> I've, I've got surprising at hotels when I'm trying to go places that I go all the time and it's nothing. Uh, they just block it or? It's, it, they got a bad rule of some sort. Hmm. The, the first uh, attempt at blocking my son's access was just a DNS rule uh, that I had noticed he was going to certain sites and so I redirected them to a black page that said busted and texted my cell phone. And then I immediately <laughs> called him and said, what are you up to? Nothing. Nothing? <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll talk when you get home. See, I, sent my oh, son's, I sent my son's, I redirected it to kidmanworks.com. <laughs> <laughs> years ago on yeah. the contract I was on, uh, he was one of the main operations in Berkeley Heights, New Jersey, and talking to most of the engineers because they're not told about I can't think of the place now, but it was basically a place that tells you how to bypass lots of security features. Oh, of course. Various operating systems. Hacking and cracking sites. Yeah. But it was for educational purposes to assist the administrator to find out these things so they can not sort of things Oh, sure. That, right. Of course, oh. Microsoft doesn't tell you about how to do these things because Microsoft can't get at it. Of course not. Well, I tried to go to the site and go. <laughs> Busted! <laughs> I'm like, oh shit, I'm just a contractor. I'm going to be in deep trouble here. <laughs> yeah. Trying yeah. to research how to break into their system. <laughs> Other <laughs> system. <laughs> That's irony. <laughs> so, those are individual lists 
Those are directories. These are the yeah, they're directories. These are the uh, race lists that come uh, with Dan's Guardian by default. I haven't had the need to go searching for other phrase lists. It's really I was just trying to block the pornography. Where's hacking? Mm -hmm. What's in that, that never happened. So what's in malware? It's interesting because it's all very similar to what like SquidGuard uses too. The same same uh, names for all the databases. But you, have to, you have to maintain all the databases in SquidGuard. Yes. You have to update all the URLs and regenerate the Berkeley DBs and restart and stuff like that. This seems a little bit easier because you're doing it by words, not unlike how Spam Assassin inspects certain things mm -hmm. in the message. Is there a thing like the Snort rules or something if you have Snort where you get um, Dance Guardian has updated lists. They do that weekly, daily. You've got W get new word lists. The uh, you do it on your own. The, oh, I don't do it, but <laughs> the updates uh, to the software come with the list. So if you can if you, you just get the list on its own. Well, I haven't looked into that, so I, I don't know. I would assume you could. I, it's, there's somebody got one. Somewhere. I'm not really covering it today, but at home I have a uh, username set up in Squid uh, so that we know who is surfing the internet. And if they don't have permission to surf the internet, they can surf only a very few uh, addresses. Uh, then I can set uh, in Dan's Guardian, then you can set rules based on the particular user. You are, are you also using like the time feature of of um, Squid so that like you have these hours that you can get on the internet and then like all the internet shuts off at, like 10 o'clock at night, no more? I'm not. I have oh. thought about it, but it would probably uh, be more annoying than helpful. That's true. We have some computers that are used by more than one person. If I could narrow it down to just my son's computer, then he'd probably come up with some reason why he should be using it. Well, you, I wonder, you, I thought you could do it by individual on the ACL. Oh, you it, if you have uh, some sort of access uh, uh, configuration like I do with the, the usernames, mm -hmm. then you can do it by user. Uh, by user. I haven't done it, but I thought about modifications. So yeah. does this run on your gateway? Yes. Uh, and that machine is like a P450, or is it something big, or is it, what's the system load? Mine's a... Mine's a P3, so it's not a problem. I have a P2 233 that it runs on and it doesn't have a problem. Yeah, I've got the same. This, this I've got is a P2 not also. very difficult for a CPU to do with this type of thing. The only big setting for, say, Squid is like how much disk cache you're going to find to it. Right. The other things that are, are helpful is, in my case, I really just use exception URL list, but uh, there's all the exception list. Uh, if you put those in, and it won't go through the the phrase comparison. Such for my uh, wife, I let her go see more things than you know. I only limit like naked men stuff. But everything else she can see. Uh, I, I don't really block the shopping sites. <laughs> <laughs> Cold Sorry, that, that's, oh. that's a hit on my wife. Uh, Here, well, you need to. Um, my wife would be nfm.com. <laughs> my wife goes to garage sales, so there's nothing oh. I can do to block that. Yeah. Free cycle. I could block the. Uh, the <laughs> Put garage sale in a band list somewhere as a word, and she can't ever find it. <laughs> she, has a, she has a six set, she'll drive down the road. But there's one. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say the garage sale. Come on, as much damage as you can do there. There's uh, all the bunch of stuff in the garage. The garage has one garage sale. So she can spend the money for that. So do you configure your client then to use the proxy, or in your firewall do you redirect 8080 back to port 80 on your firewall so any surfing just goes directly to it? If you're not using usernames. It's the simplest to just redirect uh, 80 to 8080. Transparent. Tra yeah, the transparent proxy. Uh, if you are trying to do other more complicated things like usernames and stuff, uh, then yeah, you just configure the proxy on the front end.
can you have different rule sets by username? Yeah, it, you know, once you've got the username stuff worked out, uh, then you can set up a rule set for each user. Are you, are you doing reporting that interfaces with this at all? Or no, you just, I you just go through the log. I go through the log file. Uh, I, I just use grep generally uh, for uh, the Dan's Guardian logs uh, through a single file the way I've configured it anyway. I don't know what other options there are. The logs to a single file, and then I just grep that for denied or whatever the right word is, and uh, you look to see what the bad things they've been trying to see there. Have you tried Virulator with Squid? No, what is it? Is it an antivirus? Yes. What no. it does is it saves the file locally on the proxy, and then it invokes Clam to scan the file, and it says, please wait while your file is being scanned. And then when it gets done, it'll say, okay, close the window, and it'll show, give them the file, and then they can just save it locally. Oh, for, for things that are downloaded? Yeah, for EXEs and ZIPs and stuff like that. That almost sounds like what Yahoo does on the webinar. Yeah. Whatever you I know I took some, I, I kind of made some people upset when I enabled it at my previous job. In, in <laughs> but I didn't want people. The email, it scans for viruses before it actually yeah. sends it to you. But it doesn't analyze every web page. No, it's only with the extensions that you want it to check. Okay. Traditionally, it's going to be EXE and. and how does it differentiate from an EXE that's a CGI on the other end and the EXE that you're downloading? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's been like four or five years. All right, I so. was just wondering. But maybe well, it's my I'll have to look it up, maybe. Um, How do you spell the girl? Viral ATOR. Anybody need to work on it? There we go. Digital drip. There it is. Too big right and do that. Supported redirectors, squirm, squid guard, and Jezreel. So So you have profit listed <coughs> as number seven. Oh, you can figure out how to do that. I leave that up to you. Take South Park. So you're missing number step number six and a half, which is question, 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 question. Yes. No. It's okay. He's got two sixes and a seven. No, there's always the question mark that leads to profit. Gotta figure out how to fill in the blanks. I don't see where you're going to profit from this. That might save you time and energy. <laughs> it looks like Ubuntu has 2.9.9.7 in the universe. Oh, for, for Dan's Guardian. Dan's Guardian? Are you looking for a site or user config? User config. Oh, yeah. It's kind of like Apache in that respect. Or Samba. Yeah. I think it's password the same file. I think it's the same program. Really? It's HG password. Is it ACI? Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, yeah, NCSAR. That's pretty simple. But it has all the examples for the other stuff, too. And the, uh, the thing that I like do not like about the authentication is that it, your browser doesn't just remember the authentication and use it. It asks you to log in every time you open your profile. 
I would like to just save it and say, hey, it's with my profile. I've already used my password to get into my profile. It doesn't. Wanna... It keeps you logged in between tabs. Yeah. Okay. It keeps you logged in for your whole session. But if you try to restore a session, they all come up asking for a password. Oh, that's kind of. If you try to restore seven tabs at once or something. I see. Yeah, I've had that happen. Mm. Do you maintain your own phrase list? Naughtiness limit? Is that what that said? <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you set it too high, a lot of things will uh, slip by. Each each word has a weight to it. Oh, okay. So, uh, and what the, what words it's near also affect the weight. So I'm not going to give you the examples, but. <laughs> Certain words together okay, interesting. are more dangerous than the, than if they're separated. Oh. Uh, if you and if you set the limit too high, then the only time you're gonna well, teenage thespians. It, 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 <laughs> it knows, probably gets you a high ranking. It knows the difference. Yeah, right. Okay. But I I did set it to block that because I don't really want my son becoming a thespian. Right. <laughs> I don't. I just don't think that's the life for him. It's okay for some people. Just not in my family. Well, my uncle. Well, my uncle was into that sort of thing, and I mean it's okay for him, but you know, not for my son. Well, it's the fact that he dresses in women's clothes. Sometimes. Oh no, he doesn't do that. I don't think he did that. He might have, but he he, he was a stuntman. So he, he might have actually had that opportunity. Hmm. Uh, but, uh, I don't know if opportunity is truly the right word for that. He might have lucked out? <laughs> there you go. There okay. Yeah, I don't know anything about that. Let me ask you now, this. Now, did you say that you're recording this for later? <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go to a different subject. <laughs> it's okay. This machine went to sleep. If, if, um, if you have a guest in the house, how do you deal with that? Do you have like a guest account you've made? Or is it just doesn't work until you configure their browser? Well, I'm not finding where I have the, the configuration oh, for the okay. usernames. Uh, but the it is configured so that if there's no username, they can get to a few sites. Oh, OK. And there's a default if it doesn't fit. Yeah. Username or other category, then it goes to the default. Well, that took some work because some of my son's programs uh, use web pages, but they don't use the proxy settings. So they couldn't use his username. And so I had to whitelist certain pages so that he could still get to them even though he wasn't logged in. Right. That was my question. The whitelist is there too? Yes. That's this it, it, the exception site list. It is a, a white list. Well, so, I just play with that column on the white list. <laughs> Voyeur web? Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Next. <laughs> Sorry. Back to the uh, demo configuration files. Are there any other questions? Excluding how can you download my white list? <laughs> <laughs> Is there a, a script that runs automatically to update the list, or do you have to do it yourself? I haven't updated mine. So, uh, words don't change that often, I guess. Unless they're slang words. Yeah. yeah. You know, kids come up with words. That would be interesting, though. I mean, the enemy's okay. probably coming up with lists that Considering you've got yeah. new words in vernacular that they're using with uh, sexting and, and yeah. short form versions of the words. A year and a half ago, nobody had ever heard that word. Yeah. Right. Was this word? Well, <laughs> uh, the problem with, with this program is that 
if you're serving up pictures and you don't put words next to them that identify them as what they are, just it can't tell. It doesn't look at the pictures and go, well, gee, that shape looks like something I shouldn't be serving. So it, it just, if it doesn't have the words to... So if it's it, a page of pictures, just yeah. images, then you got nothing. Right. Or if it's, the words are innocuous. Right. Yeah, if you use all, you know, it's regular words <laughs> and added special or pictures. Or if there's somebody like me that uses common phraseology and interesting practice. <laughs> Wink, wink, you know what I mean. <laughs> it's, it could be very obvious or it could be subtle. <laughs> I think somebody over there has a very I wonder if anybody's ever combined this with Squid Guard, because that has the URL filtering. I suppose you could do both of it. This does have URL filtering, and Squid has URL filtering. Okay. That's how I actually started, as I first I installed Squid, and every time my son went to a site I didn't want him to, I put the address in there. Yeah. And I was getting tired of trying to keep up with him. He kept yeah, coming up with new ones. Well, it was all it was all the regex stuff, the ACL, and I mean I had huge lists, and it was a pain in the ass because I'd have to go through once a week, go through the charge reports, figure out what sites they're visiting, and then add them to the list and restart. And well, the tough part is when you have to visit all those sites to make sure they're really bad. Oh, I never did that. I could always tell it was because it's always the same person, you know. Yeah. Just, <laughs> you don't want to look at the IP, and then you're in. You figure out, okay, add, 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 and you're done. Well, there's actually a... There's a resource. <laughs> it's making my filter better and better. Can I get a copy of that filter? <laughs> those might be some interesting sites to go look at. Research. Yeah. <laughs> it's all research. All research. Friends, you work on enough people's computers, you'll find. For him, I recommend the band IP list file. Hmm. Just put him in there. Forget it. This is a previous job. Nothing. Nothing. Clear. Okay. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Um, you have one that says PIX? Is that also URLs? I believe that that is PIX. Yeah, that's the actual PIX rating. Huh. And you can, based on the PIX rating, you can choose what you allow and what you don't. So it must, I guess I'm not sure how that would work. I haven't seen too many sites that embrace PICS as a system, but, uh, huh. Have you run into anything with, well, IRC doesn't go through port 80. No, I just block 6667 and worry about what he's doing and all the other messaging programs he has. Mm. He has uh, AIM. And Steam messaging, and a Steam just for the Steam network. Yep, and uh, voice chat for his Xbox. Oh, you had to whitelist for the Xbox thing. No, uh, the Xbox doesn't really use the uh, web. I think it uses the web some now, but I think it goes to one of the sites that already whitelisted, like Microsoft.com. He's never complained about it. Hmm. That either means. It wasn't a big enough problem, or it wasn't a problem. Okay. Uh, Steam was the one where I had to uh, whitelist the site because the Steam program doesn't use the proxy settings. What is, what, Steam? Hmm? what is Steam? Steam is a program for Windows uh, that you use to purchase games. It's like a distribution yeah. system. Yeah, and you can only play the games if you have a login, which makes it really So if you lose here. your login, and then you can no longer play. What, Portal? Portal. Uh, Team Fortress 2 and Gary's Bioshock. Bioshock was on there too? Bioshock's on there. Oh. Fear 2. He, uh, had it. I don't have an account. <laughs> 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 I believe so. <laughs> he, he had his account stolen. Uh, he's learned since that Steam Community dot MX or whatever is not the same as Steam Community dot com. Oh. Uh. It was a perfect replica. He went in there, 
typed in his username and password, standard phishing site. You're, you know, denied and redirected to the original one. And it was, oh, work. It's already got stuff. your stuff. Yep. Right, it's username and password. Then they proceed to lock him out. And then they proceed to message all his friends from his account. So you should go to this site too. Uh, oh, man. They sent him an email that said, uh, we've changed your email address. Just wanted to let you know. Or couldn't you you can't it? authenticate that the change occurred. Well, I would have preferred if they sent me a link to change it back, <laughs> we would have recovered the count in like less than an hour. But instead of sending me that link, they said you have to contact customer service. Customer service gets to you when they get to you. And five days later, yeah, we have the account back. We can play our games that we purchased again. Oh, jeez. I'm not sore or anything, but did you put <laughs> did you put Steam Community MX in your <laughs> in a filter? No. Yes. Hopefully, this was so. a good learning experience for yourself. It was. Yeah, I won't do stupid things again. again. Well, I, he pays nice. attention to your. You know what? He'll yeah. be smarter than a whole lot of adults. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but kids are so much. susceptible to certain things that they have to learn the hard well, way. Yeah. Right. Being locked out but of a game mean, for a whole week old. But it's mm -hmm. probably a good they experience for him. I mean, I don't like to see it happen, but it's a good experience for him because be, there's, a, there's tons right. of grown ups I deal with every day that have never had the experience and don't even know if it's a possibility. I would rather him learn this on Steam than on his bank account. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 And, he lost a week of gaming. That's yeah, about it. Not all his savings. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, he found worth of as the parent. With. Well, see, that's the other thing. He found other things to do. He has an Xbox. He has a GameCube. He has a PlayStation. He's, he's not spoiled or anything. <laughs> Let's see. I have a baseball and a glove. <laughs> You're lucky. I, he doesn't have one. He so. probably have a football, too. No. Yeah. That's just wrong. Yeah. I have a dog. What's a baseball? We have dogs. We have two of them. Does it come with buttons? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it comes with a little LCD screen so you know how fast you're throwing it. I got my dog. Tech mobile in the shape of a football. <laughs> <laughs> the, cool. other, the other night, uh, my wife was texting and... Should I? Tick, tick, yeah. yeah. I. I I was uh, trying to sleep and I had a tick, tick, tick of her trying to text me or something. You're going so slow. <laughs> <laughs> he takes he takes the phone and then 